Hello, I'm Ron Deeroff, Director of Boat Building at the Apalachicola Maritime Museum. Uh, as part of our boat building program, we're partnered with Pigby Boats of uh, Port Townsend, Washington. They manufacture mahogany, beautiful mahogany plywood kayak kits. This video is going to be about building the Coho, which is one of their 18-foot uh, technical kayaks. When you order a kit boat from Pigby or any other kit manufacturer, it's probably what it's going to look like when you get it. Just a series of panels packed in a cardboard box and assemblies up to you. You want to use some assembly kit, some assembly required type of uh, boats. So we're going to talk about building this kayak basically from a kit like this. Now one thing about safety in the shop. Uh, we're big on safety here. We have a lot of people come through here. Uh, you need to be aware of a couple of hazards that exist when building this kit. Even though you're not going to be using power saws because the parts are already cut by computer machines, still need to be aware that there are some hazards associated with building this boat. One of the big ones is epoxy. Now epoxies, the epoxies they have today are pretty benign and we'll talk about that a little, a little later on in this video. But if you get them on you, they can glue your skin together, which is uncomfortable. Uh, you definitely don't want to get it in your eyes, in your nose, in your mouth. Uh, it's very difficult to get, uh, get off if you get it there. Also, if you have long-term exposure to uh, epoxy on your skin, you can get an allergic reaction, a rash. So we'll be talking about some of the safety issues, gloves, things like that you have to have when you're working with epoxy. A second hazard is the wood itself and the glues used to bind the plywood together. These are plywood kits and also the epoxy. If you're sanding, wear a dust mask. Many woods are hazardous to your health and the epoxies and glues are certainly hazardous. You don't want to be inhaling those particles. So those are two big safety concerns of these kits. Other than that, you'll be using knives and other sharp tools. Uh, just be careful, a neat shop is a safe shop. Good morning, my name is James Davis and this part of your project is about the mixing and the application of uh, uh, epoxy. You have two containers, one which is your resin, one which is your hardener. Your, your mixture of uh, your hardener and your resin is a two to one ratio. You have an adapter on your hardener which allows you to pump half the amount of hardener to the ratio of resin. You need to have gloves on when you're applying this because you don't want to get it on your skin. You don't want to get it near your eyes or anything like that. You'll mix one pump, <clears throat> one pump of each, one pump of hardener, one pump of resin. You want to mix this with your little mixing stick or tongue suppressor and you want to mix it for at least a minute. And once you're mixing this, if you want to thicken it, you have wood flour, and you can mix it after you mix your epoxy. You stir it in until you get a nice smooth blend. And these are the things that you would need to mix your epoxy and mix it to a good mixture. You need your sticks, you need your gloves, you need cups, and you need a brush for application of putting your parts together. One of the first things you want to do when you get your kit is sort it, unpack it, sort everything out, make sure you have the parts list. The next thing you're going to do is start joining the panels together. This has to be done before you start building the boat at all. Because uh, your boat's going to be shipped in uh, a box that's shorter than the 18 foot length or 14 foot length or whatever length your kayak is. And so you're going to be swapping with another a number of panels. Your manual for the boat will come with a diagram in it. This one's for the coho. It will show how the panels are joined together. Pay particular attention to the numbers. For example, this one at the bottom is one, panel one. There are three panels in the coho. There's the stern, it's called 1S. There's the middle panel, which is called 1M. And there's the bow panel called 1B. These also come in left and right configurations. So you're going to have six panels for your number one uh, uh, panel on the boat. Three for the right and three for the left. When you join these together, make sure, absolutely sure, you get the right panel joined to the right one, right other panel. Also pay attention to the ends. The ends are configured specifically so that the bevels on the ends 
uh, go in a particular direction. So really study this diagram before you start joining panels together. You can correct a problem. You can cut these panels apart. It's not an issue, but it just wastes time. So first thing you do is unpack your kit, sort it out. Second thing you do is just set these panels up. The best way to do it, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of short pieces of wood. It's on a long table. Four by, we, use, we use four by eight plywood here. Put plastic down. You're going to be working with epoxy. It's going to glue. The glue is really good about gluing wood to wood. So if you glue these panels down on bare wood, you're going to glue the panels to the, to the uh, plywood table. Very difficult you know, to get off and probably damage your panels. We use fairly thick plastic, five mil plastic here. Once you get your panels laid out, and I'm using these two pieces of scrap wood for demonstration, you want to align them. You can use a straight edge. A level works really well. You can use a engineering rule. Anything that's got a straight edge on it for some of these panels. And your diagram will tell you what edges have to be laid out straight. So pay attention. The butt joints need to be very tight. And the top and bottom of the panel, the two outside edges, need to be perfectly aligned. To secure those, use some push pins. What we're going to be doing is joining this panel, putting a piece of fiberglass tape down here and putting uh, weights over it to hold it down. So you want to put your pins out beyond the width of the plywood pad you're going to use. We're going to put mylar down over the tape, this, so I don't want to nail here. I want to put my nails outside of that. So I'm going to nail one of my panels down. You don't have to hammer it in with a nail. Just tight enough so it won't move. I'm going to line my other panel the way I want it. Make sure my butt joint is tight and nail it as well. Now if you nail just two nails, they'll pull apart like this. So use a couple more. We use the push pins that come with the kit. And now I have my panel secured, plastic, and table. Next thing I'm going to do is take my mixed epoxy. I'm going to apply a thin layer to the wood over this joint. I'm not trying to get a lot of epoxy down in the joint. It'll flow down in there. Right now I want to cover the surface. I'll take the piece of tape that's prescribed to the width of the joint. I'll center it over my joint. Remember you should be wearing gloves as James said. I'm going to wet it out. This is a little tricky. You don't want to brush it because you'll move your tape. You have enough epoxy on there to make sure the tape disappears. It should almost be invisible. You don't want to slop it on because you're going to put some mylar over it. Brush it lightly if necessary. And this is a thing you'll gain with experience. You'll figure it out. These come with mylar will come to your kit. This is a very thin plastic film. This epoxy does not bond to plastic. So I'll put a piece of mylar over that tape. And what I'm looking for is a smooth surface here. I don't want uh, a bunch of bumps and humps. So I'm going to use the mylar to spread it, thin out the epoxy and spread it out so it's, I get all the bubbles out of the tape. And again, the tape should be nearly invisible under this mylar. I'm going to put my piece of wood pad, put my wood pad over it. And I'll grab a weight. Doesn't make a difference what it is. Weights for weightlifting look nice for free weights. I would use 20 pounds, uh, maybe four or five pounds. And there it is. You're going to do this with every panel. So if you have six panels on your boat on each side, that's 12 panels. If each one has three pieces, that's 36 panels joined, joined together. So you're going to have two, uh, three, or two seams per panel. That's 24 seams you're going to do like this when you start building this coho. Every one of them has to be done before you start building your boat. When this cures overnight, you can take this weight off, take the pad off, turn, turn the panel over, do the exact same thing to the other side. This makes a very strong butt joint. And never seen one of these fail. So these are really good joints if you do it properly. Don't put too much weight on your mylar. What will happen is you can get a, a, a phenomenon called epoxy starvation. If you put 50 pounds on here thinking it's going to weigh it down, all that will do is compress it so much you'll squeeze a lot of the epoxy out of the tape and you'll get a weak bond. So five pounds is probably about right for this. Maybe 10, but don't go crazy and put a 50 pound weight on there because that's really more compression is not necessarily good. Now you can use clamps, but if you're working across a table, it's going to be difficult. So just use weights, be fine. Once this is done, you can start building your boat. Now, 
We have two builders building kayaks with us this time, uh, Bob and Ray, and they're going to be building these boats. You're going to see a lot of them. You'll see a lot of James Davis, one of our staff members. And so let's get building. We're going to start building the boat now. And one thing we did uh, last week before we got started, we joined all these panels together uh, because they shipped the rakes or flanks and one in short pieces and we had the butt seam together. So the first thing we've got to do today is build frames. This boat's going to be built traditionally upside down on frames. And we have some stands here like these cut to a prescribed height and these frames will be mounted on these stands and placed on the table at certain intervals and the boat's actually going to be built by planking over these frames just like you would a traditional boat. In this case, we have shaped panels instead of planks, but it's the same principle. So our first task is to mount these frames on our stands, set the stands up for use, and we'll put them on a table and start planking the boat. All right, when we're going to start planking the boat, these frames will be lined up. We'll put a plank or a, 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 a panel on each one of these straight edges. To wire these to the frames, you need to drill a 16th of an inch hole at each one of these angles. And what that allows us to do is wire the frame down, to, or wire the panel down to the frame to hold tight. It gives a good shape to the boat. Now the next step we're going to do is drill some holes in these panels to get them ready to wire together. Uh, one thing you do when you get these kits, don't take these little white labels off, otherwise you'll never know what panel's what. So when you look at these, you've got a 2 on each one of the panels. M means middle, B means bow, S means stern, and then it's got an R on it, which means the right side or the left side of the boat. So what you're going to need to do is get your number 2 panels and lay them on top of each other and your number one panels. The number one panels are the keel panel. They go on the bottom of the boat. The number two is the next one up. And so they, you need to lay them right on top of each other so they match up. And the same thing with your another, number one panels. Because you're going to be drilling holes in both panels to make sure they're matched up. Uh, is clamp them together. A shop can never have too many clamps. You could have 10,000, but you wouldn't have too many. And that'll make sure, and I'd line up the other end at the same time using another clamp. That'll ensure that you have these edges together, so when you drill holes in each one, they're going to be lined up exactly. Because these two edges are going to butt together from the other side of the boat. So you don't, want your, you don't want your wires pulling things apart by having one hole here on this one, and one hole here on this one, because then the wires will pull them apart. Now, is this going to matter? This Not right now. Not right now. So that's flexible. That's, that, these are very flexible. But you want to make sure these line, ends are lined up exactly, or as close as you can get them. Now, to make these holes, what I'll do first is set my square so I have a quarter of an inch here. And then I can just come down here and a quarter of an inch in, I can draw a line pretty close to a quarter of an inch and make sure it's there and there. That gives you part of the holes. Now the other thing you can do is set it a half inch. And now along that line, I can put a hole about a half inch in. What I'm going to do is take my sixteenth of an inch bit and drill a hole where each of those marks are on both ends. Because again, these two ends are going to butt together on the boat like this. And so you don't want your holes offset because if you do one wire, will pull it this way or pull it this way a little bit. So if you have them clamped together like that and you drill both holes at the same time, you make sure your wires are going to line up properly. So you want to do this on both ends of your number two frame. Two panels, which are kind of going to be your benchmark, what you want to do is come to the center frame and about a quarter of an inch up from the bottom seam, from the bottom here on this butt seam right here, drill a hole about an inch on either side of that butt seam on the bottom edge. When you build the boat, these panels will go in like this. This will be the, uh, I'm sorry, this will be the top edge. If you look at the bevel on the end, you can see it slopes up. So this will be the top edge. So that makes this the bottom edge. So again, you can line these up about an inch 
on either side of the butt seam about a quarter of an inch up you want to drill two holes. And this will be kind of a marker and we'll drill other holes on relation to that hole when you start wiring the panels together. I don't, well, it doesn't make sense but it will when you see it together. So on these two panels, the number two panels, you just drill the end holes in, find the bottom edge and drill your, uh, drill your holes. Now, now that you've got the number two panels done, you've got two more sets of panels for the hole, including the number one panel. The number three panels are narrow ones, the number four panels are the wider ones. You're going to do the same thing on each end of the number three and four panels. Same pattern, two holes, quarter of an inch in, half inch from the top. So that's two more panels, the number three panels and number four panels are next. On these panels, these are the number one panels, these are the bottom panels of the boat, and they're going to actually fold up like this, so these ends are going to be subject to a lot of stress. So what we need to do is lay them back over on top of each other again and clamp them like I did before. But in this case, starting about a quarter of an inch in from the tip, you're going to drill a hole about every two inches along this bottom edge right here, for about the first, about 14 inches deep in here. So again, what the pattern of holes will look like, you'll have one right here at the tip, then you have one every couple of inches along here to about 14 inches back on both ends. There's going to be a lot of wires here because that's going to be where the most stress is when bending these things together. So you need to have a lot of, uh, a lot of way, a way to uh, distribute that force over a number of wires. Right? If you just have two, it will rip right through the wood. Yeah. So that's your next step is clamp these together and make those marks and drill that series of holes along the bottom. Okay. So what we're going to talk about now is marking the frame placements. When you put the frames out, we're not going to screw them down the table until we get them aligned properly. We're going to align them in accordance with dimensions on the panels themselves, not with something on the table. And page 7 has the uh, uh, dimensions for marking the frame placement on number 1 and 2 panels. The number 1 panel is the bottom panel on the diagram, number 2 is the top panel. Now, it doesn't really show them very clearly, but the line in the center is your butt seam on your number 1 and 2 panels. <laughs> What we're going to do now is start actually building the boat on the frames. The first thing we need to do is wire the keel panels together. Now, if you're, if you're building the cat's paw dinghy, this would be called the garboard. These are the panels or boards each side of the keel. So these are called garboards on a regular boat or a regular, traditional boat. Anyway, uh, once you get the butt seams aligned, these are pretty close. They're good enough for right now. You want to drill two holes on either side of these frames. And what they're going to be is kind of catty corner or 45 degree angle. These are going to actually have a wire go through them, into the frame, out and tie together. But right now we're just going to tie them together to kind of get the frame solid. So if you drill this one where you have this right hand panel is on the stern, you drill the, the left hand panel to the front toward the bow side. When you come down to the middle frame you want to reverse that because what we don't want to do is if you have all the wires angled the same way you're going to tend to pull the panels a little bit. So in the center one you do the opposite. So you got this way on this end and this way on this end, then you go that way on the other end. And that way the forces of the wires will kind of oppose each other. Because uh, I actually have seen them pull the panels out of alignment as much as a quarter of an inch. No, it doesn't make a difference which way you start as long as you alternate. And so you're going to get ready. That's the first step in getting ready to wire. And about how far into the edge? About, uh, I'd say uh, three-eighths of an inch, a little more than a quarter. These are going to be subject to a lot of stress. You don't want them too close to the edge because the wire will pull through the wood. Okay, the next step is kind of a two-man job. We're going to use these frames and actually bring the boat up on the frames and wire them together. So the bow frame goes down here. The stern frame goes down here. Now, I always start with the middle frame. Uh, what we want to do is bring one of the panels up this panel goes on this side. So, let's see, this is the inside, right? Yep. Okay, so this actually goes this way. And you want to bring this so the mid frame, I hope these table are long enough. It's about the window. Okay. And this is the way that frame is going to go right on here. And 
there's the frame mark. The front of the frame and the back as long as you're consistent. Okay, what we're going to do is cut a wire about, uh, I don't know, eight inches in length. Part of the heel. Through the center frame, you're the center hole you drilled in the keel, or the frame, I'm sorry. Then I'm going to lay the other frame up, or the other panel up on top of this one. Okay, and line it up. Oops. Bifocals are hard to work with. I'm going to line it up. And put our wire through. Bring them together and line them up with the frame. And let's put the frame on this side. There you go, right there. Now, a lot of people just grab it right there to twist it. It's very inefficient, so just push it down and twist it with your hands a second. One hand. Take your pliers. And twist. Now double check your butt seams to make sure they're lined up. This is the key right here. If these are out of alignment, they look bad. Once you've done that, let's see, we've got everything lined up. Yep. You want to do the same thing for your stern frame. You've got two holes. You're going to bring them, you're going to line them up. Put a wire through both of those and through the tip frame here and wire that down. Okay. Now you got the main three main frames wired in. Uh, critical to make sure your butt seams stay aligned during this whole process, otherwise your both the butt seam is going to wander. That's going to be an obvious, not a defect in the boat structurally, but it's just going to look aesthetically not too good. So got three frames wired in. Now we have to do the bow and stern frames. These are the extreme tip frames. These go in a little bit differently. They go right here, and these, the bow and stern, the bow frame, this is the bow, it's going to bend the boat around like this. So what we'll do is drill a, these two holes are drilled right here. Drill a hole about the center of the frame, about an inch and a half down from the top. We're going to insert a long wire through here and up and actually pull this frame up into this gap on both the bow and stern. It'll sit just like that. And that'll give your bow and stern shape. It's going to fit right in here like this. And what you're going to do first, you're going to line up these butt seams. And the two holes you drilled here, you're going to drill holes right across from them on the number one panel first. And wire those together so your butt seam is straight. That's the first step. What I usually do is drill one, and then wire it, and then drill the other one. Kind of loosely twist them together, and drill the other hole. And okay, once you've got that and you're satisfied, you can come down here. What you want to do is drill a hole here and here. You're going to wire both of these to the frame to the hole in the center there. Okay. And like you pointed out, you may want to do this opposite of this one. Okay. And what we're going to need to do now is pull these tips together. This is the, probably the hardest part because you have to put them together so the edges are like that. If they're like this, they don't go right. So it's really important when you mire them together, you're lining that inside edge. You line that inside edge up, yeah. Start on here, start in the center here with a wire, and just start working your way forward. When we get here, we'll, fill, we'll put a wire through those through the uh, edges here and actually pull this up. In fact, we can do that first, come think of it. Now, when aligning these seams, a real handy tool is a knife blade. You can put it down here and pry. Pins are great because you can put them here, lever one side down, and kind of pin it. So we'll be using a lot of those. 
So the first thing we'll do is drill a hole on either side of the frame, bow frame here and here toward the bow, loop a wire through it and pull this together. Yeah, pull that together. And just do, let's do, once you do your stern frame, he'll do his bow frame before lunch. Okay. And then we'll do the other one after lunch. Uh, we have the second frame, or second panel wired here at the mid frame, with the stern frame and the bow frame, three frames. Okay, we're going to wire them to the, to the uh, tip frame next, put a few more wires to pull these together, do the other side of number two, and then we'll put the number three panel on here on each side, and the number four panel. They all go on the same way in the same sequence. Drill these holes, line up the butt seams, wire them to the frames, wire them to the tip frames. So when you come back, you'll see the boat with the number one panels, number two panels on each side, number three and number four on each side. And like I said, it's just a repetition of what we've been doing so far. All right, this is day two of building the Coho kayak. Uh, yesterday we fitted the number one panel, two and three panels on each side of the boat. So now we're going to fit the number four panel day. This one's been wired in. Uh, there's a couple things about the number four panel that are different than the number one and two. The number four panel right here defines the shear of the boat, which this is not a kayak, but it's a model, model of a boat, which is this curve along the top of the boat. It's where your hull and your deck meet. Now, on the number one, two, and three panels, if you take a look at this piece of plywood with straight edges, these edges are square. So when they go together, they're at a fairly obtuse angle. You have a nice seam right here, not too thin, it's not like this, and it's not like this. So these panels are going together like that, and they're making a really nice seam here. However, when you get to the top of the shear panel up here, you're going to have the hull and the deck meet at more of a, almost a 90 degree angle, which makes this large angle right here. Very difficult to fill with epoxy, very little strength right there. So to compensate for that, the inside top edge of this panel has to be beveled. This piece of plywood has them, has them beveled. And when the hull and the shear panel fit together like this, there'll be a smaller seam on the outside. And there'll be more bonding surface on the plywood, like this. Now if you look at the edge of this, we only plane to about the last, the top laminate. These laminates, this has three laminates, this piece of plywood has five. But when you bevel it, you want to leave the top laminate square. You don't want a knife edge to put these together very tightly. You want, to, you want a seam there to get some epoxy in like this. So that's the purpose of beveling. So fit the panel to make sure you know which is the top inside edge. Very important. You don't want to bevel the outside. I've done it. Uh, I said I've made about every mistake you can make on building boats, and I have beveled the outside. It can be fixed, but it's not much fun. So fit your panel up first, like they did here. Then decide which edge to bevel, and then go ahead and bevel it with either a plane or uh, a spoke shave or a sure form tool, something like that. Let's talk a little bit about how we get these seams right, how we wire the panels up. All the panels are wired the same way. We start with the butt seam. Because that's one thing that looks nice, people are going to see it. So you like to keep this seam nice and even all the way around the boat. So our first wires go in there where the butt seam's made, made up, and also at the stern where there's another seam. Then we wire these, these uh, panels to the frames, the three main frames, the bow, mid, and stern frame. We also wire them to the tip frames and the bow and stern. Those are the only wires we really need to use. Oh, we also wire right here to pull the panels together to a nice angle. Once we've done that, we go along each of these seams, and a finger is a good way to gauge this thing. If one board is higher, one plank is higher than the other, you'll be able to tell. We use pins to maneuver the seams so that they're even. We use tape to hold them together. You don't need to put a thousand wires on these boats. If, you, if they're fitted properly and you wire them properly to the frames and to the butts and to the seams, the butt seams, They'll be really close together. You want a little bit of a gap. We're going to fill that with epoxy a little later. You want a little bit of a gap, but you don't want, as I demonstrated with the plywood, a very wide gap. So these seams are nice and tight. We have pins along here to maneuver the seams so the boards aren't offset. When we have these panels together, 
This is a good square panel. You, your both panels are fairly even. There's not one higher than the other. If you get a panel that looks like this, this is not a good mating fit. We can take a pin and maneuver it, maneuver the panels up and down to get the proper fit. If there's a gap in the panels, we can use tape to pull them together. So there's two uh, things you need to look at on the seam. Are they fairly flat across? If they aren't, use a pin to adjust them. If there is a gap, use tape to pull them together. You're looking for a uniform seam all the way down the boat. Okay, now, this side's about taped up and pinned, and so is the other side. So we have our boat, we have the hull pretty much done as far as it forming. So now we want to go through and check all these seams one more time. Your hand is, the fingers are the best way to do that. When you run your hand across a seam, you shouldn't feel one panel raised above another. If one panel is raised above another, such as right here, this panel is just a little higher than this panel, I'm going to put a pin in here to raise the lower panel up just a bit so they're flat. And you want to go through, go over every section of the boat this way because once you start gluing it together, you're committed. At that point, when you put the glue in there and it starts to set, there are no more changes you can make. So you want to go over every single one of these seams with your fingers. Your fingers are far better sensors than your eyes. And make sure that you have all these seams as flat as you can get them and as uniform as you can get them. These grooves should not be wavy. They should be a straight line. Hey, the boat's all taped up, pinned. The hull is shaped. Everything is about as uh, perfect as you can get it. You'll never get it perfect, but you can get it pretty close. It just takes a lot of patience to, to manipulate these panels. So anyway, we're all set to go. Now the next step is each one of these seams has to be filled with unthickened epoxy. And the reason we do that is to let the, the epoxy seep into the end grain. That's the most vulnerable part for water leakage. So you want to put thin epoxy in each of these seams just to seal the end grain. You have to be careful. You don't want to, you don't want to glue them to the frames. Uh, and you can't glue into the tape. So you'll only be glu gluing 80% uh, of the seams here, which will be more than enough to hold the boat together. But you have to go back and take the tape off tomorrow and glue the areas where the tape is. Following the tape of the, or the filling of the seams with unthickened epoxy, we'll go back over the same seams and fill them with thickened epoxy. And what that'll do is build up a bead in these seams that can be sanded off so it'll look really like a, it'll look like a caulked seam is what it'll look like. It'll look really elegant. But the first step is end grain, then we'll go back and put thickened epoxy. This takes a while because you've got to do every linear foot of this kayak this way on this hole. Okay. We've got our epoxy mixed, got our tip cut off on our syringe. Kind of put your finger over it because as you pour this stuff in, it'll dribble out all over the place and make a big mess. You don't need to fill the syringe all the way to the top. It's hard to put the plunger in, about three quarters of the way. And we just start putting a little bit of epoxy on this seam. Might come out fast sometimes or slow, but you want to cover the entire seam. It will soak in. But this covers the whole, the end grain of the whole of the entire seam. Don't worry about gluing the wires. If you make a mess, just wipe it up. It'll disappear when you put the rest of the epoxy on. The wires and pins can be removed easily enough, but the tape can't once you glue over it. I'm not squeezing the epoxy. I'm just almost letting it run out of the syringe. Uh, if you get a drip, just wipe it up. It won't hurt anything. Uh, this is very boring, I'll admit but it has to be done. Otherwise, your boat, if your boat gets water in it, especially through the end grain, it starts to rot, which is not a good thing on a wood kayak. Okay. All right, now we've got all these seams sealed with unthickened epoxy. We're going to go back over them and fill them. And to do that, we're going to take some epoxy and put some wood flour in it to thicken it. And you need it thick enough to go through the syringe, but not so thick that it run, it's runny. It's a judgment call. 
Uh, because if you put it in there, if you put it in the seam, it'll just sag or it'll run out. If you get it too thick, it won't come out of the syringe. That's pretty good consistency right there. It's not going to sag, it's not going to run through the crack or the seam. Okay? We'll cut off our syringe, take about another quarter of an inch off our syringe tip, so we'll have a little bit wider opening to put that in. And this is the messy part. Filling our syringe with the epoxy. Okay, now we have about the right consistency. What we'll do now on this top seam for demonstration is lay a bead in there that fills that, fills that seam. You want it elevated a bit so that you can sand it off because you're going to round this off. Neatness counts here, guys. Uh, the messier make it, the more cleanup you got to do later. Uh, it just requires a whole lot more sanding and cleanup if you get messy, so don't slop this around. The unthickened epoxy is fine. It, it sands off very nicely and doesn't layer up, but this stuff will make a nice big lump on whatever surface it adheres to. Uh, this is day three on building our coho kayaks. Uh, the holes were uh, wired together over the first two days and the seams were filled yesterday and left to cure overnight. So now we're ready to start on the next step of the building. What we're going to do is turn the boats over right side up and take the spacers off the frames. And the next step after that will be to glue the inside seams. We took the pins out because they're just uh, stabilizers. We're leaving the tape and wires in though so we don't uh, shift the panels any while we're turning it over. So if you're ready, Bob, we'll turn her over. Go. And now we want to take the spacers off the tops of the frames. Don't take the don't take the plywood and the and the the braces off. Just take the just take the screws out of the forms. You see, there's a lot of drips on the inside of the kayak. You know that's an unfortunate consequence of having seams. There'll be a lot of sanding to do uh, tomorrow. So now you want to take those frames out. Here's a okay, the next step now on this, now we got the boat turned over and the braces off, is to glue the inside seams. And uh, if you look at some of these seams, you can actually see daylight through them. Uh, so we're going to try to glue 100% of the inside seams, make it really strong. The other thing we need to do is put a bead of of uh, epo thickened epoxy down in the stems. Now, this is difficult. Syringes, you've got to put, got to put, squeeze the syringe in there a little bit. It's, got, it's pretty cramped quarters. Uh, this is the part of the boat that's subject to the most tension. Pull apart, so we really want a good bead of epoxy down in there. And when the uh, guys to return home, what you do is make what they call an end pour. Once the deck is on, you could actually turn the boat up uh, on its end and pour thickened epoxy through the cockpit into the end of this to form a nice plug down here, a very solid one. Two things. First of all, it helps glue it together, and second of all, it provides impact resistance, especially for the bow of the boat. Uh, when you do that, though, epoxy gives off a lot of heat, so you need to put the boat in a bucket of water, quite, quite, quite literally, or else you can darken the wood from heat. Hmm. Wow. So this will be, uh, hopefully at the end of the, when they're done building, this will be a, there'll be a plug of epoxy in here. Right now we're going to have, we're going to glue some epoxy, drip it down in here on both sides, and then do all these seams. Okay, okay now our next step is the inside of the hole's glued. Uh, don't glue the frames in, reiterate that. I have a bad habit of doing that. So now we're going to start building the deck. And this edge is beveled, so we have to bevel the inside, outside, if that makes sense, inside, outside edge of the, sounds like Dr. Seuss, doesn't it? Uh, the inside, outside edge of the shear panel, deck panel. Uh, this one's the right side, it says, on the label. So if we turn this over on the boat on the right side, fit it, then this is the edge that needs to be beveled on the inside, the bottom. 45 degree angle. Again, fit these things. Don't try to do it by looking at it and say, okay, that's the right side because 
invariably you'll mess it up. And what we're going to do is get a nice, nice narrow seam right here. So that'll do for both sides of the number five panel. So you need to fit it and then you can bring it on. You know which side to bevel now? This side, inside. Right. So we bring it over here. You can bevel it along the outside of the table. And then we'll do the side, then we'll put this one back and we'll do the opposite side. Well, now that you got the deck shear panels beveled, we want to clamp them together at each end. And we're going to drill some holes. And the reason we want to clamp them together is because this is going to be a very visible part of the kayak. So we'll be on the top. And you don't want your holes staggered. You want them across from each other. It helps with the wiring and fitting. And it's also for aesthetic purposes. If they're off by even as much as a quarter inch, it will be noticeable. So if you clamp the ends together, make sure you clamp the stern and the stern ends together and the bow ends together. And what you're going to drill is drill three holes in the, the surfaces of this to wire for wiring. And one of them is going to be right about here. The panel, these two panels will come together actually at this point. So we're going to wire them here about halfway down and just toward the end so we can get a wire in there. If you put them too close to the end, you'll rip the wire through the wood. So you want one about, I'd say about a half inch back from this curve, one about the middle, and one toward the end, say leaving at least three-eighths of an inch on either side of it so it doesn't rip the wood through. And you're going to do the same thing. This is the stern end on this, or the bow end on this boat. We'll do the same thing on the stern. We'll save the holes at the butt joints or the joints for later on when we can match them up exactly. All right, now the next step is to bring up the deck panels we glued together a couple days ago. And these are what sit on top of the kayak. And they don't fit very well right now, so the first step is to wire this seam together right in front of the cockpit, about a half inch or an inch in front of the cockpit, drill two holes and wire this together. And it's supposed to have that kind of curve to it. It's going to sit right up here on this frame this way. And so we need a hole on either side of this about an inch, about a half inch from in front of the cockpit to wire those together. Okay, the next step is to start taping this deck seam forward. So we don't want to wire it yet. You know, it's going to be usually a two-person job, one person holding it together and one person taping. So you may have to put tape fairly close together to make sure this holds. Uh, but see how it does, but you just need to tape all the way down to the bow doing that with the gorilla tape. together, you want to carefully move the hull onto the frames and try to visually line up the butt seams, the center line seams as much as possible on each side. That will sort of center this deck where you need it. Is that pretty good over there? Okay. Then you want to bring up your panel. You want to bring up the one on this side, your side panel, your shear panel. Make sure you get the right side on the right side. and usually requires a helper. Position it, again line up the seams about right. And have somebody hold the stern and then bring up your other panel for the other side. Okay. And what you're going to do is wire these two together and tighten them down, not really tight, but not but some do it tight, and leave this one open. In other words, put the wire through but leave the ends up, but put the wire through both of these front holes and loosely twist them together. Oops. It says it's about a two-man job, two or three-man job for each boat. And then you can, you can hand twist these and make sure your tips are aligned pretty closely here so you've got the, got the end of the boat just exactly where you want it. And again, you need to line up your seam so it's edge on, like, like that. It's a little bit tricky and may take a little bit, may take a few pins. 
Okay, and don't twist them down too tight. And then go ahead and twist that one down a little bit. There we go. Okay, good. Now you want to do the same thing at the stern. And you're going to wire, drill four holes like you did in the other ones, and wire these, these seams together on both the, the mid part and the stern seam on both sides. Both By, the wire the number here. four or five panel to the number four panel. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. Not, 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 not yet. Wire the number five panel to the hull first. Okay, and then we'll do the number six panel up there. I'm going to start our pins and begin positioning this center seam. Uh, you may have to use a knife to pry them apart a little bit, but you want to get this seam right on the edge. That's difficult to do. And then we can position this seam, the very bow. So we have our configuration of the bow of the boat just where we want it. About a foot back is all we need to work with at the moment. Okay, this piece of wood is going to fit in here, like this. So we don't want this panel to come all the way back and touch this. It's about a 3 16th of an inch gap between these two panels. So if you make that mark here, on the other side also, that'll tell you where to bring this panel back to. So you don't end up making too small of a gap, 3 sixteenths of an inch, yeah. Okay, once you have that, you can position your stern deck panels. And you want to bring the other one up? Okay. Now, if you can't make a 3 sixteenths of an inch gap enough, you need to file or sand off the ends of these panels. Well, that one didn't quite get all the way up there. Yeah. And what you want to do is wire this seam together down here, just like you did with the other one, and tape this seam together all the way up. Well, you're building a wood kayak, and one thing that really nice that looks nice with the wood kayak is a wooden paddle. This is a Greenland style paddle. I made this in about four hours out of a pine two by four. You can make them fancy by laminating different woods together and carving it out, but it's still the same process. A, a piece of two by four wood will make a nice Greenland paddle. Several advantages to it. First of all, it looks great with a wooden kayak, and you can custom design the color or stain it to match your kayak if you like. You can put a plastic tip on the end, which this one doesn't have. I used it for years and didn't wear away. A couple of nice things about the paddle. You can make the loom in an ovoid shape so it fits your hand comfortably. Uh, when you're paddling, if you want to turn, the nice thing about these is you slide your hands down. You can make a nice, long, sleep, wide sweep turn. It's great for rolling or bracing. Uh, but the main thing is looks. If you've got a wooden kayak, why paddle with a plastic paddle? And uh, you can build these very simply. Sit in there about like this. Yeah, how do you so you need to bevel the underside okay. so that it won't be square there. It'll, it'll have a little bit better fit to it. Okay, now uh, we're wiring in the rear, deck, the rear deck recess panel. This is tricky. This whole deck is flimsy and uh, doesn't have the support the hull did, so it's going to move around a lot. We're going to wire the center section, aft section of the, of the uh, recess plate in first and then start wiring it from the inside out to both the uh, deck panels, aft deck panels, and to the uh, cockpit panel. And this is one of those jobs where you just have to put wires in and start manipulating things. Now this is the stern of the boat. As you can see right here, 
these two panels are out of alignment. Pretty typical, it's very hard to get them together. So this is a technique you can use to get all these seams lined up. I'm going to take a razor knife, slide it in there, and pry these two until I get them situated where I want. See, now they're even. Now to lock them in place, I can use a pin that's supplied by the kit to make sure they stay there. That's a technique you want to do all the way up and down the boat on all these seams to get these seams just exactly where you want them. For example, right here. Right here I've got an overlap between this number five shear deck panel and the shear hull panel number four panel. There's an overhang here about an eighth of an inch. I use a razor knife to gently pry them apart. Got a pin I can use here. Yeah. Thank you. And again, I can use a pin. Carefully, don't poke your fingers. I can use a pin to hold that where I want to. You may need more than one pin. This is pretty, pretty tight right here, so I'm kind of going to need two or three pins in here. Don't be afraid to use a lot of pins. Well, it's actually pretty good, right? That's perfect right there. I've got my seam just perfect right where I want it. Okay, so but here we've got this panel on the left side raised slightly above the one on the right. I can pry it down a bit, hold it down with a pin. The quality of your work you do here is going to reflect in the quality of your boat. So don't be afraid to take your time and use pins or whatever you need to do to get these seams even. People are going to notice this part of the boat where these seams come together. And the better you make it look, the better it's going to look. So take your time. It may take you an hour of fooling around, pinning and taping to get these seams where you want them. But take your time. Now, Starting at the bow, because the bow of the boat is usually the first place people go, start taping and pinning as we talked about. When we're done with that and everybody's satisfied that their boat's as good as we're going to get it, we're going to glue the center seam and the two side seams between the four and uh, the number five and six panels. We're not going to glue the deck to the hull. Uh, if you're building one of these boats, this is not where you glue the deck to the hull. What we want to do is lock in the shape of the deck by letting the epoxy dry overnight once we glue these seams. We'll take it off tomorrow and start fiberglassing. The last thing we'll do Saturday will be to glue this hole to the deck. So after we're done with this, there's going to be more gluing just like we did for exactly the same as we did for the hole. Okay, uh, this is day four of building the coho kayaks. Uh, the builders have taken their holes off the decks. Remember, we didn't glue the deck seam right here. We don't glue the hull to the, or the deck to the hull until the very last, next to last day. Taking it off and what they've done is sand these, sand these down. Now you're not looking for a glass smooth finish. This will never be seen again. What you're looking for is to get the glue of the small pieces of the tags that were on the uh, panels, the label them five right left or five bow right or whatever. Uh, and also to knock down any drips that are in here so the fiberglass cloth will lay, will lay uh, flat. So the next step after this, we're going to clean this up and then we're going to lay fiberglass tape along all the seams on the bow and the stern except for the area right around here. This is going to receive reinforced fiberglass cloth, two, two layers of cloth later on. So now we've got sanded down, we need to get the sawdust off. The quickest way to get sawdust off of one of these boats is use mineral spirits. And you can use a tack cloth. Tack cloth works great. A regular rag. I just use a paper towel dampened with mineral spirits and just carefully wipe down your boat getting the dust out of it. The nice thing about mineral spirits is it dries quickly, it's compatible with the uh, resin. It's not like water. If you use water you gotta let your boat dry for several hours otherwise your, your resin and your, epo your epoxy won't adhere properly so don't use water to wipe these down. Once you get the bulk of the sawdust out of there, put a little more mineral spirits on your rag. Go over one more time to pick up the residue. Again, you don't have to get it squeaky clean. We actually put wood flour in some of the resins anyway, and some of the epoxy anyway to strengthen things, so a little bit of wood won't hurt it. But you don't want lots of sawdust laid on the surface. And once you go over the entire inside of the boat like that, you'll be ready to start fiberglassing. Okay. 
Now, uh, personally, I don't, I don't know if it makes much difference, but these little pockets that have sand, sawdust in them, I just like to take a pin and clean them out. It makes for a cleaner finish. Uh, I'm not sure it's absolutely necessary, but when you put the epoxy on, if you have a layer of dust in there, say an eighth of an inch thick, your epoxy will sit on top of that and won't penetrate down to the wood at the bottom. So I just like to take myself a, a, a pin, pen, one of the pins we use for pinning the boat up, and clean out those kind of holes where I have sawdust deposited, especially on the outside. It can make a difference in your finish. Plus the fact that if you don't do that, you can get a little bubble under there. And then you have to pop the bubbles. I like to pop like uh, blisters in your epoxy bottom of your boat. In your fiberglass, you got to go through all that. So it, it just it's just helpful. You clean them out now, get that dust out of there. So I don't think it affects the integrity of the boat, but it's just one of those nice things to do for your finish. Okay. Now the next step is to reinforce these seams with fiberglass tape. We're not going to fiberglass the entire inside of the deck. The only part you're not going to reinforce with this is right here around the recess. That will get a double layer of cloth. Uh, that's the that's probably the most unsupported part of the deck right here. So what we're going to do is lay a length of tape down each seam and cut it to length and epoxy this in place. The best way to do that is lay a, take your brush, lay a thin layer of epoxy down the length of your seam, lay your tape and tamp it down using your fingers. I like to use fingers rather than a brush for that. And then brush another layer of epoxy over it to wet it out. Also, when we're done with that, we're going to cover the entire surface inside with a layer of epoxy to seal it. That'll keep it from rotting because you're not going to be able to open the boat up and do it again. So you're going to put a good layer of epoxy over every surface here except the bevel area. You don't want to do that? I like to get right up to the bevel area because it's going to be very hard to do this down here once the hull's glued on, deck's glued to the hull. And what happens is if we get any epoxy on this bevel, we'll just sand it off tomorrow so we have a nice wood surface to mate the hole in the deck. All right, we're getting down to the end of this. What we're going to do now is cut all these wires and take these frames out. Uh, if you did like, <coughs> like we did here, unfortunately, put a little glue in there. It's going to take a chisel and a hammer to get it out. But then, then we're going to fill up the stems and start standing the inside in preparation for fiberglassing tomorrow. So my technique personally is to cut the wires close to the hull because when I pull them out I don't wallow the hole out by, bring, by, by, bringing a, by trying to pull a large piece of a ball of wire through. Now I'll show you a trick about getting a wire out of an area of the epoxy. Okay, this wire right here is embedded in epoxy. I can cut through the epoxy to get it separated. I can bend this out to where I can get to it. carefully, very carefully, use a grill lighter. That's the wrong one. If I can gently heat the wire, do not scorch your boat and don't catch it on fire. And that's about all it takes to melt the epoxy right around the wire. If I get hold of it. Pull from this side. It'll come right out. Okay, now that the bulkheads are out and the wires are off, the inside's clean, we're going to put a fillet in the end of these in the stems. And made up a little tool out of a tongue depressor, taped a couple together, and cut this one down to about half width so I can work down in this area right here. And what we want to do is put a fillet in here. They're going to do an end pour later, but right now we'll put a fillet in here to make sure we have a real good. Uh, bond here so we don't have anything pulling apart. Notice we left the wires in the stems still, just in case. I'm not sure it's necessary, but just in case. Mix up a couple of pumps of epoxy to about peanut butter consistency. This is pretty about the thickest you'll use. And we'll put this in the bag. And you want to prepare to get messy, but you want to put it down in one corner of the bag because we're going to use this like a, uh, like a, like a uh, frosting bag or something or making cookies. Yeah. Now on some boats you'll do a lot of filleting and tongue depressors make great ways of building a fillet because you can put them down on a seam and you cut a, just, a, just the corner off this bag. You don't want a big hole in it. Except it's like a decorated frosting bag. And now I'll just put the bag in here and it's hard to get in here sometimes. 
and you can use pressure, you don't have to squeeze the bag itself, just squeeze one side of the bag against the hull in these narrow openings and you get lots of epoxy in there. What you uh, need to worry about, and the, stem, and the stems is not too far, but you don't want sharp edges, pieces of globs of epoxy sticking out because it'll snag your dry bags. So you can take your tool here and just begin working it. And no, you're not going to get it perfect on the inside, but you can certainly smooth it out. And what you're trying to do is not only smooth it, but force it back into the end of the stem at the same time. And what I've done now is I've both smoothed it out and forced it back in the stem so it uh, tries to seal off these ends and bind them together. Now you are going to do an end pour when you get home, but this is a little reinforcement to the, uh, the epoxy on the outside just to make sure we got a good bind, bind here. And before we take these wires out, that'll be tomorrow, so I have to harden overnight. Ah, now it's time to glass the inside of the hull been sanded fairly smooth. We don't have a glass, they don't have to have a glass smooth finish on the inside because this fiberglass is going to roughen the surface anyway. So putting the fiberglass in is a two or three or four man job because you don't want to drag the fiberglass cloth over rough surfaces like these bevels. So you got to lay it in there and smooth it out beginning from the center. Now you want plenty of cloth, in other words you're not going to be able to smooth this out this way because you're going to get a bubble in the middle if I pull it that way. So you want to start in the middle and smooth it out, and then if you have to have extra cloth drape over, fine, just go ahead and do it. Because you want it laying on the bottom uniformly, because it will get bubbles if you start pulling it up. So anything you do should be to pull it down from the side to fit it in. And this will take a while to, to smooth this out. But take your time, work from the middle toward the ends. You're going to do the same thing with the epoxy, is work from the middle toward the end. And don't worry too much about the size. You want to get the bottom two panels, four panels pretty good before you start putting resin in. And you'll get the sides as you move along. And don't have to be perfectly smooth, but you don't want to be trying to manipulate this with resin on it. It'll get really messy if you're trying to do too much adjustment with the resin on it. Now as far as making a line along the gunnel, uh, you can do a couple things. You can put a piece of painter's tape down and trim along that when you get done. Uh, for the inside, I don't worry about it that much. Uh, if you really want to be neat around the cockpit area, you can put that painter's tape down about here and you make a trim look up. But nobody's going to see this down here ever again once you close it up. And it's not going to be visible. So, you know, whatever line you take is going to be good. You're going to trim this off about a half an inch below the gunnel, though. So what I'm going to do here, since this is the cockpit area, and I might want it to look nicer. I'll take a strip of painter's tape and just eyeball it about a half inch below the gunnel. Now this is not necessary. And what you can do while the tape is, while, while the, after you've glassed in, and about two hours after you have it after while well, the tape is still a little bit damp or a little bit wet and hasn't fully cured, you can tape a razor knife and gently cut along this line right here. And you can see it through the glass. And it'll make a fairly that'll make a nicer sharp edge there around the cockpit. A little bit a little bit prettier, I guess you'd say, more even. Rather than just kind of cutting this way. So this is something you can do to make it look a little nicer. It's not necessary, but it is somewhat helpful. If, you, if you're working by yourself and you have to dry the cloth over, take painter's tape and put it all the entire length of the gunnel on both sides. That'll make it a whole lot easier for you to work with your fiberglass. You won't tear it up because if you start getting pulls in it, it's going to weaken the cloth and it's going to be visible. Just a couple things you can do. Okay, now it's time for the intimidating part. You're going to commit yourself to fiberglass in the bowl. Once you start here, there's no turning back. You also need to finish this once you start. Uh, you want to kind of maintain a wet line like you would when you're painting or varnishing. It's not going to hurt that much if you don't, but you're going to get it. If you, if you stop for an hour and then it start to cure, it's going to stiffen up on the edges. It's going to be really tough to get it smooth. So you really need, once you start this, you need to finish it. So give yourself at least two hours, I would say, to do it. Uh, Give yourself three or four actually would be nice, but 
plan on at least two hours, so eat lunch or whatever you need to do before you start. Uh, because once you start, you need to keep going. Okay, you're going to use squeegees. You can use brushes. Personally, I use squeegees. Some people use brushes. Some people use rollers, foam rollers. Uh, whatever works for you is fine. Uh, but we're going to demonstrate squeegees today for this. So once you've got that done, take out the center of the board and just pour a little small pool in the center there. That's pretty good. And what you're going to do is take this squeegee and just work it into the cloth, work it outward first, and then maybe a little side to side, and spread this out fairly evenly. You want to wet that cloth out, but you don't want puddles of, of resin. As you go, you can just straighten out the cloth as you go, and in the center, bring it up the sides. It's going to take a while, just keep working it. Now we finished inside the hull, glassing it. We're going to let it cure for a while. We're going to glass the deck, reinforce the back of the deck a little bit. Uh, got a piece of scrap cloth there that's been cut. We're going to lay this. This is going to be fiberglassed over the rear part of the deck and the raised plate. Reinforce that area. Then we're going to take another larger piece of cloth, James. And we're going to, what you're going to do is put it over the entire deck. So we glass in the apron, the very front of the deck. Getting in and out of the kayak, you're going to be pushing down the sides, sitting, pushing down the back. This is going to be, this needs to be reinforced a little bit. So these two pieces of cloth will be, will be laminated over what we have now. Okay, before laminating the cloth over the deck, inside of the deck, you want to sand down these knit edges on the tape. When they make the tape, when they knit it, they knit it lengthwise and they tie off the ends on the side. So you've got this raised edge, and when you put fiberglass resin on there, the epoxy resin gets pretty sharp. So I want to sand this off. You don't have to sand it down smooth. You just want to knock the sharp edges off before you put this cloth on. Before fiberglassing the uh, recessed part of the deck, uh, it's prudent to put a fillet around the edge. Now, I did round that off of sandpaper, but fiberglass doesn't like to lay over a 90 degree angle. It will form a bubble down in this area right here. But if you fill that in with thickened epoxy and make a nice fillet, the fiberglass will, will uh, adhere better. Bubbles weaken the bond. They weaken the fiberglass. So what you can do, whatever you can do to avoid bubbles is good. This will uh, allow us to put the fiberglass down fairly flat over the entire uh, wood surface and avoid that kind of bubble that weakens it. We're going to lay this cloth down over that area now and uh, usually it takes two people because you're working over wet epoxy with fiberglass cloth. So once it gets down there, it's going to stick. And once that's on there, now you can mix sun thick and epoxy and epoxy this over the deck. When that's done, we'll lay the larger piece over the entire deck. And this is what it'll look like. And this will be all epoxied and laid down. We'll trim that off this afternoon later. So next step is now to laminate or to, to epoxy down this piece of cloth. All right. Uh, we'll let the epoxy cure about two, two and a half hours. It's, it's still tacky but it's set up enough that when we do this next operation, we won't pull the cloth away from the boat. Uh, what they're doing is uh, trimming right along the bevel where we have the fiberglass and removing the excess fiberglass from the top edge of the boat, of the hull. Uh, you need to score deeply enough with a knife, very sh use a really sharp knife, a new blade if you can. Uh, you need to score deeply enough to separate the fibers or cut the fibers of the fiberglass, but you don't want to go so deep as to start cutting into the wood too much. That's a fine line, takes some uh, practice. Uh, when you get to the tape, you can cut along the bottom edge of the tape. It'll make a nice clean line. And tomorrow we'll paint over that with uh, 
thin epoxy and seal it up before we glue the hull on the boat. One thing about uh, doing this while the epoxy is still damp is it's a lot easier to work than when it's really cured. Once it's cured, it's hard to get off, much harder to get off than it is when it's still, the epoxy is still what you might call green. So that's why they're trimming it this way now, rather than waiting until tomorrow to trim it. Do this for the entire boat and make your top edge look really nice and you'll be all set up. We'll put the hull on the, or put the deck on the hull tomorrow after the epoxy clears. <laughs> So what they're doing now is, uh, since we fiberglassed the underside of the deck, is sanding down the rough spots. Uh, don't sand too much. If you start sanding into the weave, you're going to compromise the strength of the fiberglass. You can't re-wet it. Once it's cured and you uh, sand into the weave, you, loosen, you reduce the strength of it and you can't regain that strength. So it's easy to over sand, so take it easy on the sandpaper. The other thing they're going to do is, is uh, uh, sand off the uh, mating surface between the hull and the deck on both the deck and the hull parts. And once that's done, we'll be ready to join the hull and the deck together permanently. Since you put the epoxy and fiberglass on the uh, deck, on the inside of the hull, you're going to have to re-drill your holes in the center seam. We're going to use these for the final fitting to make sure we keep the boat lined up uh, fore and aft where we want to. And the center seams are a good mark. So once you get them cut, or once you get them re-drilled, cut four pieces of wire, two for each hole, two for each side that'll go through both those holes and be able to wire the boat together and have those ready. Everything's ready to go to start putting the boat together. So here comes the exciting part. You're actually going to put the boat together for the last time. Uh, this is it. So if you haven't got it right now, you've got a problem. But everything should be fine. Now what's going on now is taking some slightly thickened epoxy and painting the beveled seam on the deck or on the hull. And this does two things. It provides a bit of adhesive power when we put it together. And we're going to inject more epoxy in the seam. It also seals that edge so you don't get water down there. This is end grained. And it's like a, they have like little siphons in it. It's going to suck water down into the plywood. So you want to get a good seal on it. So it's going to do both, accomplish both. Uh, once that's done, we'll eject epoxy into the seam just like we did on the rest of the hull and deck. And also, as far as you can reach, up along the inside. Now, when they cut the hatches for their bulkheads, they'll cut hatches right about here. They'll be able to get up here and seal the rest of it when they get the hatches cut. But that's done after they fiberglass the deck and the hull. Let's just turn it over, set it down on the line. So you want to wire that in before we do anything else. Is that side aligned? As soon as the seams are wired, we're going to tape down the ends by wrapping them. Make sure we get a nice tight seal on them. And once that's done, we can be a little more leisurely about uh, setting this up. Okay, we're going to tape this end down securely. And to do that, you really need to wrap it. Because this tape isn't going to stick to the wood that well. So we'll get this tail end aligned, do the same thing for the bow, wrap it. Really very tightly so we get it uh, down as, as good as we can get. And then it's time to pin and align. So let's put the other one ready about. Starting at both ends, working back toward the center. Make sure you get everything lined up exactly where you want it. Pins are very handy for this. Uh, putting the deck on the hull to me is the most stressful part of the whole building process. You got glue, you're trying to get it aligned perfectly. Uh, this is the last straw. The last thing you're gonna, your last chance to get it exactly right. So it is a little stressful. But once you're done, uh, the builders will inject epoxy into the seam here. Now, this is going to be a little bit fragile. This is not. You don't want to get in the boat and try to paddle it yet by any means because this seam isn't fully sealed. It's only going to be really strong when you glass the entire around the entire boat and seal the inside of the seam and let it cure. So this is a, a not temporary, but it's to hold it in place until you finish working on the boat. Well, the boats are completed now after six days. 
and they're loaded on the cars and ready to go home. The reality of building a wooden boat, however, is you've just really started. The structure of the boat is complete, but there's still a lot to do. First thing you're going to do when you get home is sand the boat down and smooth off all of the uh, seams. Remember, we built a bead up above, above the seam of thickened epoxy. All that's got to be smoothed off now so you can fiberglass the hull. You can use a mechanical sander like this variable speed uh, random orbital sander. But if you do, be aware that it's easy to sand through the laminates on uh, this plywood. The laminates are very thin. It's going to be obvious if you do so. 220 grit sandpaper is about the most you want to use on this on low speed. I don't recommend sanding by mechanical sander unless you're really good. But if you want to, go ahead. Otherwise, just use a sanding block, uh, some 150 grit sandpaper, and a lot of elbow grease. Another thing you're going to need when you're sanding is some kind of dust mask. These are cheap, probably the cheapest ones you can get. They're good, but they're not great. But they'll do for the occasional boat builder. If you're going to get into boat building and you really want to be safe, get a respirator. They're not that expensive and a dust mask. These are the essentials you need for sanding your boat. Once you've got your boat sanded smooth, you're going to want to fiberglass the outside. It's going to take at least three days because you need to put the fiberglass down with one coat of epoxy like we do on the interior of the boat. Once you have the outside glass, you're going to need two more coats of epoxy to fill in the weave. When you're going to sand the boat for varnishing, you do not want to sand the fiberglass, you want to sand the epoxy smooth. So, Within 24 hours of your first coat of epoxy uh, laid down the fiberglass, you want to put another coat on, and then 24 hours later, another coat. Don't wait three or four days, because if you do, you need to re-sand the entire boat. So pick a time when you have three days where you can work every day for a few hours. After the boat is fiberglassed, it's going to be time to sand it down smooth. Again, you can use a mechanical sander. Uh, a hand sanding is probably best. Your chances of sanding through the epoxy are a little bit less, but you still have to be very careful if you use a mechanical sander by no means ever take a belt sander to one of these boats. Following that sanding, you're going to want to install your combing. Uh, that goes on after the boat is sanded, but before you start varnishing. The instructions in your kit are pretty good for that. Just follow your instructions for installing the combing. Once you're done, it's time to varnish. That requires sanding the boat absolutely smooth and putting at least four coats of a marine varnish on. Uh, marine varnish is best, but you want to varnish it he has a uh, ultraviolet protective component to it. That's absolutely necessary because ultraviolet light, sunlight, will degrade the epoxy. It will soften the epoxy over time and the structure of the boat will be compromised. At least four coats, five or six are better. Varnishing is an individual thing. Everybody does it a little bit differently, so work on a piece of scrap wood with some uh, epoxy on it until you get your technique down. There are a number of videos online for that that are really good. Once it's varnished, it's time to trick out your boat. Yeah. Pygmy has a lot of options. Hatches, bulkheads, deck rigging, end toggles, rudders, uh, sea socks. There's a, a whole bunch of uh, really great accessories for your kayak. You can get as technical as you want with this. You visit the Pygmy website. Uh, they have very reasonable, they have a very good website, reasonable prices for all their gear, and you can really make your kayak look nice. Then it's finally time to enjoy it and paddle it. Uh, don't be afraid to get it out. This is not a mantelpiece. This boat's meant to be used. So get out there. Yeah, you're going to scratch it up and ding it up a little bit. It's easy to fix. Sand it off lightly and revarnish. But these boats are meant to be used and they will turn heads out there. So have fun with it uh, and don't be afraid of it. They're great boats. So have fun. <laughs>
and it's something that'll last your lifetime. Thank you.